Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Ann Reardon and today I'm going to show you how to make seven different types of frosting and we're going to put them each through a taste test and then we're also going to put them out in the hot Australian sun to see how well they hold up and test if they can be used with fondant. Our first frosting recipe is American buttercream and this is a frosting that most people are familiar with. Beat your butter until it's smooth and all of the quantities that you're going to need for these frosting recipes are on the website howtocookthat.net and I'll put a link to the recipes in the description just below this video. Stir in your icing sugar or your confectioner's sugar and then beat it on high speed for at least a minute and then add in one to two tablespoons of milk. Then for all of the frosting recipes that I'm doing today, I'm adding half a teaspoon of vanilla essence and a pinch of salt. Scrape down the sides of the bowl and beat it until it's smooth. American buttercream is easy to make, it pipes well and that's why it's so popular. And let's see what the taste testers think of it. This one's very sweet. This one's my favorite. I think I'd give it a five out of five. Quite grainy in texture. It's really sugary and nice and like you get a sort of crunch with it. Tastes like birthday cake icing but very traditional tasting so I would say I'll give it a three. Disgusting, I give it a one. It's all like gritty and sugary in a bad way. It was really sugary. That tastes like icing I would make, like simple. It, you can really taste the sugar while you're eating it. I'll give it a five because I really love sweet things. But it's good. I'll give that one a five because I would usually make it, so it has to be the best. For our second frosting, we're making French butter cream. Mix together the sugar and water in a saucepan and then whip the egg yolks on high until they're pale. I recommend that you use pasteurised eggs for any of these frostings that have eggs in them. Heat the sugar and water in the saucepan until the sugar dissolves and then continue heating it up until it reaches around 238 Fahrenheit or 114 centigrade. Then with the mixes running, pour that hot sugar syrup into the yolks and now it will turn into a consistency a bit like milk but just keep beating it and it will go pale and thicken up as it cools. Then add in the butter a little bit at a time and then your vanilla and your salt and keep beating it on high for a minute or two until it's smooth and glossy and then pipe that onto your cupcakes. Mmm! The icing taste is really flavourable. It's nice, it's sweet, it's not too sweet but it's um, nice and creamy. The icing really tastes a, a tiny bit um, buttery. I'd give it a two because it doesn't have enough sugar in it and... This one's very buttery, very rich tasting, really smooth. It's too creamy and I don't really like the flavour of it. I'd give it a four. I would give this one a four. A three? A four. To make Italian meringue frosting, add some cream of tartar to the egg whites. And I'm using pasteurised egg whites that you can buy in a carton for this. Beat on high speed until you have soft peaks and then mix together the water and caster sugar and heat stirring until the sugar's dissolved. Then add your candy thermometer just like we did with the French buttercream and heat it to 238F or 114 centigrade and then turn your beaters on and pour the sugar syrup in in a thin stream. And first it's going to go all liquidy, but just like we did with the other one, keep beating and keep the mixes running for about five minutes and as it cools it will thicken up. Then you can add your vanilla and your salt and you end up with a light, fluffy, fat-free frosting. It pipes well, but expect it to drop down and lose some of its height. I like it because it sort of tastes like meringue. Very, very soft. Not overly sweet. Was that even icing? <laughs> very, very light, foamy. I like it for a five. I didn't even feel like that was icing, but so it... I'd give it a four. Oh, this one looks cool. I'll give it a, a two. Me too. To make Swiss butter cream, take cooled Italian meringue frosting and add cubes of butter. At first it will look a bit like this curdled lumpy mess but just keep on whipping it on high and it will come together to form a smooth glossy frosting. 
thick, creamy, not very sweet. I don't really like it, so I think I'd give it a one out of five. There's not heaps of flavour. I'll give it a three. Yeah, definitely a one. I don't like it. A three. It's good. I'll give that one a three. Next, we have ermine frosting. To make this, beat together the butter and the caster sugar or superfine sugar until it's smooth and pale. And in a saucepan, whisk together the flour and the milk and then stir that over high heat. And the mixture will start to get lumps and if you just keep stirring it over the heat, then it will thicken into a smooth paste. And once it's thick, keep it over the heat for another minute just to allow all those starch granules to burst so you don't have a floury taste to it. Allow it to cool. To speed up the cooling process, I placed the base of the pan in a sink of cold water. And then with the beaters running, add one spoonful at a time and then add your vanilla and your salt and beat it until it's light and fluffy. I like it. I'll give it, I think, yeah, a four. It tastes a tiny bit salty to me. It's got a nice um, creamy sort of feel to it. I will give this one a three. So I'll give it a four. Yeah, I think I'll give it a four because it's quite sweet. It tastes sugary. I don't know, it's too hard. <laughs> that one's a good one. I would go four. Traditional cream cheese frosting is made by beating together cream cheese and butter until they're smooth. And this is easiest if you've bought both ingredients up to room temperature first. And you need to make sure you're using the block cream cheese, not the spreadable ones that you buy in the tub because they're too soft. Stir in your icing sugar or confectioner's sugar and then beat on high for two minutes. And the frosting is quite soft, but it holds its shape reasonably well when swirled onto a cupcake. I'm gonna need to run after this. <laughs> I think it's gross and disgusting. I think I'll give it a one. It's sort of sour. And I love cream cheese, so I go number five. It's sour, but I really like it. I'll give it a four. It tastes like what my mother-in-law puts on carrot cake. <laughs> um, and I'll give it a four. I'll give it a one. <laughs> I'll give it a one. So I wouldn't use cream cheese frosting on a cake for young kids. <laughs> Next we have white chocolate ganache. To make this you heat up your cream until it just starts to boil and then pour the hot cream over the white chocolate. Let it sit for 30 seconds and then stir it in. If there are still lumps of white chocolate then you can microwave it for 10 seconds and then stir it again until it's smooth. Then leave it to cool overnight or if you're in a hurry you can pour it into a large bag, spread it out flat and put that on the shelf in the fridge for about an hour. Once it's thickened up, put it into a bowl of an electric mixer and beat it on high for two minutes. Then add your vanilla and your pinch of salt. It pipes nicely and holds its shape well and it's quite a thick frosting. If you want it to be softer, you can increase the ratio of cream to chocolate. I like this one. Mmm, tastes a lot like white chocolate. Mm, and I would think it's my favourite so far. Five. I like the flavour, but I think the texture is a bit too hard. I think I'll give it a two. It tasted really nice, so I'll give it a five. That one's thicker than the other ones, just so you know. But it's still good, still four. A five. Here we have some of each frosting piped onto fondant and left overnight. If the moisture content of the frosting is too high, then the fondant will start to weep. And that's exactly what's happened with the Italian meringue and the cream cheese frostings. But the rest, it's all fine. So if you had your Italian meringue or your cream cheese under fondant on a cake, then the underneath layer of the fondant would start to dissolve and you'd get this puddle of sticky liquid oozing onto the cake platter.
let's see what happens if we put the cupcakes outside on a hot day. Now today it's 32 degrees centigrade or 90 degrees Fahrenheit and these cupcakes have been in the fridge for several hours before going outside. If you have this frosting under fondant on a shaped cake then you're going to need your frosting to be able to hold up in the heat if you want your cake to stay together. All the frostings start to soften but after nearly 20 minutes in the heat the ganache and French buttercream just collapse. The Swiss, ermine and American all start to bow down too and the Swiss topples over after about 30 minutes. The others manage to hold on for at least 45 minutes so the best frostings for outdoor are ermine, American cream cheese and Italian meringue. Thanks for watching, subscribe to How to Cook That for more cakes, chocolate and dessert recipes and leave all your requests in the comments below and I'll see you all on Friday. Sorry, my blonde hair's in the way. Oh, that's an issue. Don't do that. Don't do that at home. <laughs> because I just like it all. Does it say? Ready, set, last one. So sad. I'll give it a one.